While Democrats are hoping to win back the White House this November, they're also looking to win back control of the U.S. Senate. And the clearest path to that victory may go through Georgia, where both Republican Senators David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler will be on the ballot. Loeffler was appointed by Governor Brian Kemp to complete Senator Johnny Isaacson's term and is running in a special election this fall. According to the Cook Political Report, her race leans Republican, while David Perdue's race is a toss-up. Joining me now is one of the Democrats running against Kelly Loeffler, the Reverend Raphael Warnock, senior pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Thank you for joining me tonight, Reverend. Good to see you, Reverend Sharpton. Thanks so much. Now, when I hear your name and, and when we uh, uh, talk, I, I think about it, and, and I put this in context of your candidacy. First, people need to be reminded you pastor the church that was pastored by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Sr., but uh, one of the highlights of my life will be on the night uh, in November 2008 when uh, the first black president was elected. We opted not to go to Chicago where he was getting the results and had been invited uh, to the uh, what ended up being the celebration. Uh, but we, Martin Luther King III, Bernice and uh, Dexter King, and I had said, let's have a watch night service at where your father pastored and watch like it was the uh, New Year's night. The results come in and thousands came and you allowed us to come and host it that night. And you and I were sitting with Dr. King's sister when Barack That's Obama right. was announced the winner. And I'll never forget uh, Ms. Ferris, his sister, who's a major pillar in the church you pastor, had tears coming down. John Lewis was behind us as we sat with the King family and watched Barack Obama elected. And I think about that to say your run for the Senate emanates out of your long-standing activism and out of you capturing in the King pulpit the night we elected the first black president with the King family seated there. Oh, I remember that night well. It was an inflection point without question in our country. Uh, we saw Barack Obama become the president of the United States as we were sitting there, uh, you and I, next to Mrs. Christine King Ferris, who, by the way, a couple of days ago, uh, on September 11th, celebrated her 93rd birthday. She's right. the only living remaining uh, sibling of Dr. King. I, I think we are at a another inflection point in our country. Uh, this is a moment for us to reclaim the American dream that Dr. King spoke so eloquently about. Uh, he and black people in his generation had every reason uh, to doubt that promise, uh, but they held fast to it. Uh, we, of course, officiated John Lewis's funeral a few days ago. Uh, his was a faith born of suffering, uh, a moral authority that uh, uh, transcended human station and called the human law to more closely align itself with the law of love. That's what my campaign is about. I, I grew up, you know, I'm the pastor of Dr. King's Church, sure, but that's not where I started. I grew up in public housing down in Savannah, Georgia. My dad was a preacher and a junk man. He preached on Sunday mornings, but he spent most of his days picking up old junk cars that other folk had thrown away. And then on Sunday morning, uh, he took off his dirty clothes, if you will, and put on his church clothes and stood behind a pulpit and preached to folk who themselves felt thrown away. And that's the lens through which I've tried to do everything that I've done in my life. I've been at Ebenezer Church now 15 years. I've been fighting for health care reform. I've been fighting for voting rights. I've worked alongside Stacey Abrams as we've registered together some 400,000 Who, who 400, is supporting people. you, by the way? Stacey Abrams is a big supporter of yours. Absolutely. She, in, she endorsed my campaign hours after I announced because she and I have been working together all of these years to register voters, to empower voters, to educate voters. And we saw the impact of that in her race in 2018. She was running against a man who was the player on the field and the umpire. Uh, and in spite of all of his voter suppression, his clearly putting his thumb on the scale, he barely eked by her by less than 55,000 votes. The good news, Reverend Sharpton, is that since 2018 in Georgia, we've registered some 750,000 new voters. 49% of them are people of color. 
45% of them are under 30. And so you are witnessing before your very eyes the rising of the New South. It is bold, it is inclusive, it is forward-looking, and you'll see the results in a few weeks. <clears throat> now, a recent AARP poll shows you tied with Doug Collins in second place behind Kelly Loeffler in your race. How much are you hoping that Loeffler and Collins split the Republican vote because it's all in one in this special election? It's not separate by uh, Democratic primary Republican. It's all in one. How much do you hope they will split the Republican vote to help vault you into uh, second place? What, what, what Georgia's uh, Democratic path forward if you don't win one or two Senate seats this election uh, cycle? Uh, if, because if you win, uh, if you have come in at the top two, I understand, in November, then you run again in January, those top two against each other. So my question is, do you feel that Collins and, and, uh, and Loeffler will split the Republican voters in this special and give you an edge to make sure you're in the top two for the January election? Well, you know, you know, I'm running for office, but in my heart, I'm a preacher. So I do spend more time thinking about who I'm running for than who I'm running against. But there's no question. They're already splitting the vote. And uh, no, there, there's no wonder that they're splitting the vote. They essentially have the same message. They're both arguing that if you elect me, I will do the better job representing Donald Trump. And so the folks who think that the country is doing well with nearly 200,000 deaths, uh, with a, uh, a kind of economy that we haven't seen since the Great Depression, if they think that it's good to elect somebody who's going to represent what we already have, then they can choose between the two of them. I'm running to represent the people of Georgia, all the people of Georgia. And um, yes, we're seeing my numbers move. Uh, I need 50% plus one uh, to win on November 3rd. If, if no one does that, uh, as you point out, the top two will go to a January 5th runoff. All right, the Reverend Dr. <coughs> Raphael Warner, thank you for being with us tonight. Coming up.